And we'll show you one more. Look at this beautiful hypo. Blue-eyed leucista crystal with the jungle gene in that. This is outstanding. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, over the weekend, I had my uh, daughter in the snake room with me. She was my little assistant helper, so we... Uh, Filmed a couple of little snake videos with her holding the snake. A couple of them she was afraid of, some she wasn't. Uh, we also gonna look at today a um, my labyrinth and crystal boa litter from last year. These snakes are growing up really nicely and uh, they're gonna be available for purchase. So I wanna show you some of the beautiful babies we have. I took a few outside in the sunlight. I should have taken them all out. I was just too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. And uh, I want to just show you how beautiful that, you know, the labyrinth gene was really brought to the market by Jeff Ronnie back in, I think it was, I'm trying to think now, it had to be back to about 2015 or something like that around there. I remember I bought a pair of hypo labbies from him. They were really expensive, but they were apps. I had to have them, they were gorgeous. And at the time he, you know, he had imported one of them with a, what we, he was calling the crystal. And he, he was convinced that was the super form of the labyrinth gene. Uh, the snake unfortunately died. They supposedly did some uh, micro, mitochondrial DNA testing on it. And supposedly they both had the same DNA. So he was pretty certain that the labby in the super form was going to form the crystal. But no one really knew for sure. Um, so, you know, we were buying it just based on the fact that the labyrinth itself was, was a beautiful pattern. It would lighten things up. So I bought my pair. He had made a, several pairs available. I bought my pair and, and I got them to breed. I don't remember what year it was. The same year he did. And I, a week before he, mine gave birth, his gave birth, and he produced the first crystal. A week later, I produced the first, what I believe to be super hypo crystal. And uh, that, that snake and that picture of that snake actually went into Vin Russo's updated book, The More Complete uh, Boa Constrictor, which is kind of cool. And uh, then it was really nice to put my picture in there of that snake. But that was the first blue-eyed leucistic uh, and boas that we had really ever seen. And they were gorgeous. And they're still gorgeous. Blue eyes, white, you know, body type, all the patterning, it turns pink. It's, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous snake. And there's so much still to do with this, um, this gene. So I want to show you this litter. And uh, hopefully you guys will be able to really appreciate it especially when the ones I took outside in the sunlight. All right, stay tuned. So it's like uh, 9.30 at night over here and come out to my garage and I got a duck in my garage. But it's like a fan, it looks like a pied duck actually. Look at it, it's kind of beautiful. It must have uh, come in out of the dark. I think that maybe the coyotes were chasing it or something like that. But according to my neighbor, Katie, it belongs to one of my other neighbors. So she's gonna come back and come get it probably. <laughs> it's kind of just chilling out over here. We have a lot of wildlife here in Cape Coral, Florida. Now it's under my car. Now I'm sure it'll probably poop under my car a little bit. Come on, duck. Come on, ducky, ducky. I knew it had to be a little, it had to be pretty uh, tame because. All right, here's our bamboo rat snake. Oop, who just got my little daughter, Aria. See? Not always biting me. Didn't, yeah, but it didn't hurt. He's just like kind of trying to protect himself. Oh my God. He's putting some good size on. Look at that little cute little head. Dad, when that snake, when that snake biting me, it didn't hurt. When he bit you, right? And you like no, he's just being, he's just, he's just a little scared. He's not. Or just a little bit. Yeah, he's got a little, he's got a tiny mouth. He's not going to really be able to hurt anyone because he's little. Well, that but, didn't really hurt with his teeth. I'm glad it didn't hurt. We don't want you to get hurt. But Arya's not afraid of anything. My other kids are petrified. They would be traumatized. What? Right, Arya? He's afraid of some snakes that fight. Yeah. I'm afraid of none snakes. No, you're not afraid of any snakes, right? I'm not afraid of any <laughs> You're my big girl. What do you got there, Ari? 
a ball python. That's right. That's a ball python. That's a super orange dream cryptic ultra male ball python too. Look at that head. Pretty beautiful, huh? Yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> and you're not afraid of it, are you? No. Nope. That's a that's a really good little boy that we produced last year. If I was a girl. This is a boy snake. And you know why they call ball pythons? Because they like to go up in balls like that, right? Yeah, because every time ball, ball pythons go like wrap themselves in a the ball, that that's why they call ball pythons. That's right. And, and the ball is uh, is first ball pythons. Hey, well, they do that to protect themselves, right? Because they want to. Yeah. Let's see if we can get them to open them up, open them up a little bit, so we can show no, what he looks no, like. No. Oh, there he is. There's his head. What a beauty. All right, let's go find another snake. What do you got there, Ari? A turtle. What kind of turtle is that? You remember what I told you? Mata Mata turtle, right? Mata Look at that. It looks like a leaf, right? Pretty cool. You're not afraid to hold that, huh? No. No. You know they eat fish, right? Yeah. yeah. They eat baby fish. Yeah. Pretty cool. Let's lift it up a little bit so we can show. Oh, look, it's all red underneath. Very pretty, right? Yeah, there and some spiky up here. Yeah. That's and, for protection, right? And the nose is kind of spiky. Yeah. And, well, and one of the ears, like, ears, like, here, that, that's kind of spiky. They look like leaves, like, right? that's how they disguise themselves in nature. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right, let's put him back. All right, Ari, what do you got there today? Python. That's right. That's a carpet python. That's a snow and the white or red eyes. Albino, right? Albino. So red eyes mean albino. So this is albino and azanthic, which gives us a snow. And this is a carpet python, which is not a lot of snow carpet pythons here in the United States. So we have a bunch of them we produced, and you really like this one, huh? Yeah, it's nice. You like the little snakes, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, she doesn't like to get bit. I don't like, like daddy. <laughs> Sometimes I get bit. Yeah, but you don't care, right? Just not by the big... You don't want to get bit by the big snakes, though. Like that really Uh-oh, we have some guys escaping here. Look at this. Uh -oh. We have an escape plot right here. Daddy! We got to get these guys in back in here. We have a lot of snows in here. It's snowing. It's snowing carpets in here. Oh, you want to put that one back? Escaping. Yeah, that's an albino actually. That's not a, this one's an albino. The albinos are darker. Okay, can I take it down? Nighttime is coming, sun is setting. You might hear the peacocks in the background. We got my albino olive python is out. Just kind of chilling. Usually she's in the hide box. She's like, you know what? It's a nice day. It's probably about 78 degrees right now. It's a cool breeze. She's just chilling out. Look at her. Really just loving, loving life in the outdoor enclosure. <laughs> Our boyfriend's up in the hide box, chilling. I don't think we're gonna get a, lit, uh, a clutch out of her. I don't know. I thought this was gonna be the year. We saw some locks. Um, I don't think it's gonna happen. She's eating still. But you know, you know how that goes. Next, there's always next year. But I'm so happy that they're doing so well outside that I don't even care if they're breeding or not. It's just kind of cool to have them out here. All right, we're gonna do some uh, little video on, we're gonna look at some of my labbies and crystals that I produced over the, these are from last year, obviously. This is a hypo labby right here, male, little boy. He's got almost a complete stripe down his entire back, which is kind of cool. I like the labbies when they have that. It's, there's a couple, like, there's like a little line, there's some lines here, but there's really no break. So it's a pretty complete uh, line. Now, this is supposedly also potentially, I think he's jungle too. See that? See that little dotted line there? That's a jungle. So this is jungle hypo labyrinth male. And I'm going to make these guys available, too, if you guys are interested in getting into the Labby project. You know why I love Labbies, because the Super Labby is a crystal, and we'll show you those in a minute. I got a few of those, too. So here's our Jungle Hypo Labby. 
This is a beautiful, beautiful, just hypo labby. So no jungle in this one. This is also a male. Really, really nice. You can see he's much lighter than the, the one with the jungle in it. They're all different. The labbies all have different expression of the labyrinth pattern. This one's not connected. This looks like you're kind of like prototypical labyrinth uh, boa. The labyrinth pattern, really nice, nice light eye. Really pretty. Now here's a really light hypo labby jungle female. So jungle does different things with labby and different things. This one is more of a so almost a solid. You can see the labyrinth pattern. You can see that there's like an opening in that little tube that's along its dorsal surface, but it's smaller and it has a different look. Nice little head spear. So this, we're gonna call this hypo labby jungle. And this is a little girl. If you guys are looking to get a pair, we can pair them up. This girl with some of those males I just showed you. Really, really nice. Now this girl's really, really clean looking. So I'm calling her possible super hypo labby. So I think we got two copies of the hypo gene here because she is really clean. There's no jungle in this girl uh, that I can see. And she is just absolutely gorgeous. Very, very clean looking labyrinth pattern. Little, little nice little head spear. Very well defined, very well defined patterning she's got on her, which I kind of really like a lot. This is like, this is like, Truly, what, when, you, when I think of a labyrinth, a really clean looking labyrinth pattern, this is what I think of. Now, there are ones that are a little bit more busy because the hypogene will definitely narrow the labyrinth pattern and super hypo will do it even more. So you're gonna have a reduction in this labyrinth pattern. You can see it's getting smaller and, and getting more pinched because of the hypogene in there. And it's really personal preference what you prefer. Now this is a really, really nice looking, much more well-defined, almost looks IMG to me. There's no IMG in this litter, but much, much more darkness and outlining in this. This is, this, I have to call, this is definitely jungle and it's definitely labyrinth and it's, it looks hypo to me too. I don't think this is not a hypo. This is a really light, those reds on the tail just say hypo, but you can just see the expression is so much different. And I think it's the jungle gene Jungle Gene does, does, does different things in different snakes, and it's very unpredictable. It's very hard to explain to people what jungle does, you know, and I asked a lot of breeders when I was coming up, what does jungle do really? And my good friend Slav is the one who really explained to me how you can spot jungle. You can spot jungle by the, oops, I almost got bit, by the, bottom line, the dotted lines that run along the side of the snake there and give it a little more grandy look. So this one's a little spunky. I like the spunky ones. <laughs> this is another female. And this one I think is the only one that really is not hypo. I think this is just a jungle labyrinth without the hypo gene. I think it's the only one in the entire litter that wasn't hypo. Both parents were hypo, so you're gonna get a lot of hypos when that happens. But this one's dark, you can see. And you can see, look at the hypo gene I told you reduces all this labyrinth stuff. And look how beautiful that labyrinth is in this, with all the little mini circles, the chain linking, uh, and then obviously you got that dotted line down the lateral aspect because of the jungle. So this jungle labby combination works really, really nicely uh, in this little girl. If anyone's looking for a labby that doesn't have hypo in it, this might be a perfect little girl for you. And she's got some nice size in her too. These are all a year old, by the way. All right, now we move on to our crystals. This is what I believe to potentially be a super hypo jungle crystal. Okay, so crystal is the super labyrinth. So two copies of labyrinth. Um, <laughs> we know that there's jungle in here. We can see that lateral stripe right there. And it's got a really reduced labyrinth pattern. So I'm thinking this is definitely super hypo. I've produced super hypo labbies before it or super hypo crystals before and they're, they're gorgeous. They're really light looking, they have beautiful eyes, but 
Um, I'm gonna take her outside. Ah, way, way better. Look at that. Look at that eye outside. You can see that blue, crystal blue eye. You can see that total reduction in pattern of the labyrinth pattern. Probably because she's super hypo. Really, the, the natural sunlight really shows these guys in their true splendor. Beautiful. And she's available. We're going to make her available. All right, now here's a super crystal male. We saw the female before. He's in shed now. I think he's going to shed, but beautiful. Look at that. There's nothing nicer than a leucistic boa constrictor. Look at that eye. How crazy is that? Pink tongue. This one has a little bit more chain linking, but I think this is super hypo crystal too, to be honest with you, with the jungle gene in there as well. Not sure, but I think I would call. I mean, we, we're going to sell it as a possible super hypo. Obviously, that's you can't really prove it until they breed. But in my experience, the reduced pattern of this labyrinth here pattern usually smells super hypo. And we'll show you one more. Look at this beautiful hypo blue-eyed leucistic crystal with the jungle gene in there. This is. Outstanding. This is what you want in your collection. <laughs> Gotta have one of these. Really nice labyrinth pattern still here, which means to me, probably only has one copy of the hypogene. It could have none, but I, I think this has one because it, it still has a reach. I've seen crystals with way more patterns than this. I'd say one copy of hypo, uh, jungle, crystal, which is super labby. Look at that eye. That's a crazy eye. That's a beautiful blue eye. That's where you get the crystal. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you are got as excited about the labyrinths and crystals as I did. Uh, I love those boas. I think that they're a, a tremendous, tremendous uh, gene. I think it's uh, the potential of it has yet to even be tapped, truly. There's so much that can be done with the labyrinth and the crystal gene and it's great because it's it's an incomplete dominant so all you need is one copy of it and you can have it in your collection so if you pick up a hypo labby for me you can breed it to anything and, you can, and, and half the babies are going to be labbies and that's that's makes it really appealing and then if down the road you decide you want to breed it to another labby and produce a crystal and start playing with those i mean can't get better than that the super fire diamonds which are the black eyed leucistics and the super labyrinths, also known as a crystal, uh, which is a blue-eyed leucistic and boas, are two just of my favorite genes. Because you know, you guys know I love white snakes, and I love white boas especially. And blue-eyed and black-eyed boas are really cool looking. So, uh, what would happen if we produced a super fire super labby? That's the question. I think that the super fire would over supersede the super labby. We might get a light eye, but we're going to certainly get a, a, a white. We're not going to see any pattern, I don't think, uh, from the labby gene. Uh, I think the uh, super fire would wipe that out. But let's see what happens. Someone will do produce it. I'm sure there's people that are very close to it. And I love to see new genes combined and new snakes produced. So, guys, let's keep it out there. Let's keep putting all those ideas out there. And we have to help each other out. And you know what? If we have to, if I have to buy a snake from a guy in Europe to, to make my projects happen. That's what it's all about. We share the, we share the genes. I've sold a lot of labbies to Europe and I've bought back a lot of labbies that had different combinations. I bought a, um, uh, I bought two or three hypo IMG labbies that I just didn't make myself. I don't know why I just didn't think about it. And they made it in Europe and I bought some from them after they saw, after I sold them some labbies. So that's the way it goes, man. We all share with each other and uh, that's what makes the hobby so amazing. All right, guys, I want to send out the love to Brian Barczyk, who's fighting the good fight over there, battling pancreatic cancer. Brian, we love you. We love your channel. We love uh, all the energy you put out, and we're going to give you that energy right back so that you can beat this uh, terrible disease that you're battling right now and come back even better than you were before. All right, guys, we are out of time. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.